Hello folks, it's time for Function Synthesis Redux. We're going to look at another way of doing function synthesis with our op amps. So here's an interesting circuit for us to peruse. Um, in the prior video, we looked at a technique using Zener diodes that were across RF. Uh, it's a perfectly valid technique to use. It is somewhat limited in that um, you have to find the precise value of Zener that you need, and you can't just get any old size Zener. So we're going to look at something a little bit more flexible. Also, instead of having it across RF, which we could, I have moved this section, this is the section over here of interest, across RI, the uh, R1 value that you see here. Now, you could do the same thing with the Zeners. This section could also be over here. But whichever way you do it, if the uh, diodes are across RF, you get the compressive gain characteristic. If they're across RI, you get this expansive gain characteristic that we'll see momentarily. Okay, so how does this work? Well, the, the trick here is we have sort of two sections. Um, we have a section up here and a section down here, and these operate independently in other words, one affects the positive half wave of the input and the other affects the negative half wave of the input. And you can see essentially this creates a voltage divider going back to our power supplies. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this lower one, this lower section right here, using the positive 15 volt power supply. The question is, at what point do these diodes start to conduct? Now, remember this point here is a virtual ground. So for small input signals, these diodes are going to be off, right? Both of these will be off. And we'll essentially have this value here, this 6K, sitting across this 6K to produce the gain. We'll have a gain of negative 1. This is an inverting amplifier after all. Now, as the signal increases in amplitude, whether positive or negative, this point here or this point here eventually will be come a large enough in magnitude to turn on the diode. Okay, and when that happens, these resistors here, R4 and R5, will wind up being in parallel with uh, the 6K over here, this R1 value. That creates a new value of RI, a smaller value of RI because they're in parallel, and that will increase the gain. So, looking at this bottom one, where does that occur? Well, the sort of threshold, if you will, um, if we had an ideal diode, would occur when this point went to ground, right? Because this end of the diode is going to virtual ground. Now, with a, a more real-world uh, look at the diode, you know, we would say there's maybe six or seven tenths of a volt before this thing actually turns on. So, in fact, we really have to bring this point down to about minus 0.7 volts, right? Given the polarity of this diode. We have to bring this point down to about minus 0.7 volts. Um, where does that occur? In other words, uh, as far as an input signal. Well, I've chosen kind of a convenient value for the resistors here. If this point gets to minus 0.7, then R6 will have exactly 15.7 volts across it, right? We've got a 15 volt power supply. This point's at minus 0.7. So there's 15.7 volts across this. And that obviously will create a 1 milliamp current. And that one milliamp current, because this guy hasn't turned on just yet, is flowing down through R5, meaning there must be a three volt drop across R5. So the total voltage, in other words, sitting across R1, where this thing just starts to conduct, is going to be this three volts plus this 0.7. In other words, about 3.7 volts. So when the input gets to a negative 3.7 volts, R5 winds up being in parallel with R1. So we'll have 3K in parallel with 6K, in other words, 2K, and the gain will pop up to 3, 6K over the 2K, all right? Now, on the other polarity, right, when the signal swings the other way, um, you know, when does this thing turn on, okay? Well, it's basically just a flip. The same sort of thing is going to happen. Um, we're going to wind up, because this is a negative 15 volt power supply, we're once again going to wind up with the conveniently chosen 15.7 volts, 15.7K, 1 milliamp. 
and then this will produce a 5 volt drop across this 5k so at a brown 5 uh, 5.7 volts this section is going to turn on and the 5k will appear across the 6k and you know that'll just about have a little bit more than have this so the gain will go to about two and we have an asymmetrical situation right one half is going to give us a, a break point around 3.7 volts and we're going to have a gain of uh, up around three this other half is going to give us um, a break point up around 5.7 volts and a gain around two okay so you now let's see what actually happens here i've i'm going to throw in a seven volt peak triangle wave and again, because um, as we did in the preceding video, because that's a nice straight line, we'll be able to see where these uh, various breakpoints kick in. So we're going to come up here and do a transient analysis. And we'll expand this out a little bit so we can see it. All right, so the green is the input signal. I'll just verify this with our legend, right? So there's a VN. Nice triangle wave, 7 volts peak. Now you notice for smaller signals, right, in this area here, this slope is same magnitude as the input, indicating our gain of 1. All right? Great. But then we notice as the signal increases uh, in amplitude, suddenly we have these sort of breaks, right? One in the negative region, one in the positive region. And notice the asymmetry between these two things. All right, so this is caused by... Um, you know, the, the asymmetry in the design back here, the two breakpoints being different and the two gains being different. So we can see that this slope is steeper than this slope, indicating an increased gain. And the same thing is true over here, right? This is steeper than this, all right? If we looked carefully, we would notice that this slope and this slope are not identical, okay? Clearly the asymmetry in terms of how high this peak is and how high this peak is sort of gives us a clue into that. But let's grab a cursor over here. And we're just going to move this around. Let me put my little thing over here. And we're just going to move this around. Okay, and you can see, all right, here's our breakpoint right in this region. And we're getting, you know, a little over 3 volts, right? Um, you know, as I said before, these diodes don't turn out at exactly 0.7. You know, that's a logarithmic curve that we have. Um, so in that region, it's starting to come on and takes a few tenths for it to actually come on fully, right? By the time we get up to here, you know, this thing is going full bore. Um, down here, we're still on the gain of one, all right? Okay, now, at that point, right, that's the, the uh, roughly 3.7 that we saw down here. So above this, we're going to get this gain of three, 6K in parallel, 3K is 2K, and then we had a 6K uh, for the RF value. So there's our gain of 3, right? So that's what this is. Now, if we come down to the other side, we try to find this break point, right, somewhere in this region, you know, we can see, all right, that's, you know, 5 five and change, right? Which is, again, um, what we expected, right? When we get sort of fully on, there we are. We're up around 5.7 um, for this thing to really fully turn on. Okay, and again, once we get above that, we're going to see a gain of about about two five k in parallel. With six k will give us about three. Six uh, divided by the three gives us a gain of about two. Right, so we can see. All right, this is delayed. It's later in time, and the gain isn't as big. You know, once it does break, it breaks later, and the gain isn't as big. So this peak is nowhere near as big as this peak. All right, that would make perfect sense. You know, this thing is peaking out uh, at about eight point seven on the negative side. And uh, you know, up here in the 13 volt range on the positive side. All right? Okay, so you could, if you wanted to, add more rungs just like we did with the zeners, right? We, you know, we started off with a simple zener pair in one resistor, we added a second one, and we could see how that gain would sort of drop off. We can do the same thing here. We would pair up a couple of resistors and another diode, another pair, another diode and so on and so forth. Clearly, this takes more components than the Zener form does, but it's a lot more flexible. And generally, the way you would um, design one of these circuits, you know, I used 15.7K here just because it was an, an easy thing to calculate. But typically, what you would do is you would decide where you want the uh, breakpoint voltage 
and what that gain is going to be. So the gain, your new target gain, essentially tells you what this resistor and this resistor are going to be, right? Because they're going to wind up in parallel. So that's your first step is to determine, all right, what's that target resistance for the positive and the negative sides, okay? If you want it to be symmetrical, then this resistor and this resistor will be the same value, as will this one and this one, right? R3 and R6 will be the same value. So now that you've established this uh, resistance value, you then determine the corresponding outside resistor. In other words, for this one, it would be this guy in order to establish the breakpoint, in order to establish the voltage that you need. And just remember that it's this power supply, you know, um, along with the 7 tenths of the diode that is going to drop across this resistor or this resistor. And essentially it's really a voltage divider that will tell you um, the value of the R3 or the R6. And that's essentially the way you design it. Now, if you're thinking, hey, what if I do both? In other words, what if I have one of these out here and I have another one over here, or maybe I put the zeners over here. You know, what do I get? Well, you can get something pretty wacky looking. In other words, you can have something that starts off at a certain gain and then starts to increase because this thing is taking over. And then as the signal gets really big, you know, you have something over here, it could fall back off. So you could get kind of a, a gain characteristic that's sort of a curve, you know, this interesting compound curve rather than just always decreasing or always increasing, right? Um, practically speaking, you do have to kind of fiddle with these. The design is a little on the uh, empirical side just because of the, you know, sort of imperfectness, the diode turning on at 0.7 instead of zero, things of this nature. But it's still a fairly straightforward way uh, that you can do either correction for something like a sensor that would be out here or uh, some kind of a waveform synthesis where you're going to distort a waveform into a new shape. All right. Okay. There you have it.